How will you be able to follow the activities uh, during EVA? Will, it, will you have a visual monitor? And secondly, another question, could the EVA period be extended if everything goes real well? Well, I have two different ways of listening to uh, Neil and Buzz while they are in the limb and also while they're out on the lunar surface. Uh, first, uh, I have direct radio contact with them uh, on very high frequency radio during a 13 minute period that I'm uh, uh, in view of them. I can uh, talk to them when I can see them during this 13 minute period as the command module goes overhead. In addition to that, the ground relays on the S-band, our normal air-to-ground frequency, they relay to the LEM everything which I say to the ground and vice versa. All LEM communications uh, go to Houston where they're turned around immediately and sent back up to me so that uh, they hear everything I say uh, within five seconds of the time I say it and, and the reverse is also true. Now the S-band is is uh, operable any time uh, I am within line of sight of the Earth, not necessarily the, the limb, you see, so that uh, out of each two-hour revolution, uh, you know, roughly 60% of the time I am in contact with the ground and therefore I am in contact with the limb. In regard to seeing them, uh, I'm afraid my eyesight's not quite that good. They're, they're too small uh, to be seen from an altitude of 60 miles. There is a, a possibility, and we intend to explore it further, that uh, the LEM itself will be visible from the command module. The, uh, the flat sides of the LEM uh, being made of a mylar substance which reflects sunlight gives us hope that, we, uh, that I'll be able to see a flash of light uh, at precisely the proper sun angles when I am nearly overhead. And this, uh, of course, remains to be seen. I have a question for Mike Collins. Uh, what will the uh, command module pilot be doing while the commander and the limb pilot are on the lunar surface? Will you be doing any special experiments of any type or not while you're up there by yourself? This is while they're doing the lunar surface. I, I heard the first part, what will I be doing, and specifically uh, the second part? Are there any specific type of uh, planned experiments that are new that uh, you'll be performing while uh, Neil and Buzz are on the lunar surface? No, there are no... Uh, there are no uh, experiments as such. Uh, as I said earlier, I hope to, uh, to determine uh, whether I can uh, see the limb from 60 miles up. And in addition, I hope to get some detailed uh, uh, navigational sightings on the, the location of the landed limb. I will take some uh, optical marks on the limb if I can see it. And then this, uh, uh, these marks will be fed into uh, the arithmetic of the computer, which will then be able to determine uh, more precisely the exact uh, latitude, longitude, and altitude of the, uh, of the limb on the surface. But uh, th these uh, uh, really are not experiments as such. They're just part of the overall uh, framework of, uh, of trying to piece together exactly where the limb is relative to the command module for the ensuing rendezvous. Other than that, I'll be doing housekeeping chores of which there are many. Shima, West German TV Channel 2. Uh, could uh, Mr. Armstrong perhaps tell us, is there any legal importance in getting down on the moon? I mean, if you are settled down there, would any area there be the property of the United States or a wider area, or is there absolutely no legal implication? Well, I think we might refer to this uh, plaque again in the last line says we came in peace for all mankind. I think that's precisely what we mean. Orion, Swedish television. Neil Armstrong said before that it was rather unpleasant to think of the fact that uh, or the possibility that you would get stuck on the moon. What is the longest time uh, if the ascent stage doesn't fire? And I think uh, Mike Collins said in an earlier interview that he would uh, then have to, to just leave and go back to the Earth. What is the longest time you can wait between the not firing and the time when, the, when Mike Collins would have to go back, the time you would have to work on the moon then to fix whatever was wrong or try to fix it? Give those numbers immediately at hand. I, I, 
I don't have the, the numbers. Uh, probably uh, would be a matter of a couple of days. At what point in the timeline will the American flag be erected on the moon's surface? What? It's uh, going to take place uh, when we are both early in the time period when we're both on the surface uh, in order to aid each other with the uh, unstowing and, and uh, operation. And it also should be uh, at the time period when we have uh, the TV camera placed in such a position that it would be able to see that. Uh, should, uh, I don't mean to sound discouraging, but uh, I don't have high hopes that the picture that uh, we'll be able to send you back from the, the surface will be nearly so good as those you've been looking at from in the recent flights from the command module. Our, uh, the camera is somewhat different and uh, we're somewhat more uh, restricted in the kinds of lenses and the kinds of that we can use and the kinds of lighting we have available to us and the resolution of the camera and I suspect that you'll be somewhat disappointed with those pictures. I hope that you'll uh, recognize that uh, uh, that is just uh, one of the problems uh, that you face in a, an environment like the the lunar surface, and it'll be some time before we really get high-quality lunar surface pictures back on TV like. Uh, James Burr, the BBC. Colonel Collins, uh, to, the, to people who are not astronauts, you would appear to have the most frustrating job on the mission, not going all the way. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't, uh, I don't feel in the slightest bit frustrated. I'm going 99.9 .9 some percent of the way there, and that suits me just fine. Uh, I couldn't be happier to be right where I am. I'd like to say in that regard that uh, the, the man in the command module, of course, by himself, has a, a giant-sized job to do. Uh, he has to run Rosa's job and my job, along with his own job, simultaneously, and uh, in addition, uh, act as uh, relay to the ground and be available for any kind of questions that we have to ask him and any that the ground, and it's really about a, a, at least a three-man job, and of uh, the utmost confidence that uh, Michael certainly not lack for something to do while he's uh, circling around, and if, uh, if he can't think of anything else, he can always look out the window and admire the view. We're coming up on the hour. We've got time for one more question. Over there on the far side. Yeah. In, from your previous experience, in the two and a half hours or so that you're atop the rocket before actual blast off, is this a period of maximum tension, rather like uh, being in a dentist's waiting room? Uh, I, I didn't quite get, would you repeat that question, sir? Is the period uh, when you're actually on top of the rocket just before blast off, is this wait a period of maximum tension? Um, speaking from past experience, I haven't found that to be the case in the Gemini series. Uh, you're usually quite busy in that, that time period, and it's one, uh, a, one of the phases of the mission that we have a very high confidence level in. We, it's nothing new, it's things that have been done before and done very well on a number of occasions and uh, we're quite sure that that, uh, that booster will go. We, we promised the still photographers a chance to get some pictures at the end of the press conference. We'd, we'd like to do that right now. <laughs>